Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Thank you for joining us on this live webinar, um, the first live webinar that we're going to be conducting. And uh, our plan is to keep doing this um, very regularly. And uh, we're really happy with the turnout that we have received, uh, quite a fantastic response. And in today's presentation, we're going to be focusing on how to build up excellence in management of clinical trial side treats. And it's titled, Do Not Resist Rhesus 1.1 and all other criteria. Today's uh, webinar is going to be moderated by Tobias Gottman, who is the Chief Sales Officer here at Mint Medical, as well as myself, AJ, I'm a Senior Sales Consultant. The webinar is set up in this way that you can hear us, but we can't hear you, but you do have the ability to type in your questions. So on the right-hand side of the GoToWebinar app that you're uh, viewing this presentation at the moment, you should be able to see a little um, uh, dialogue call out box wherein you can click in and type any comments or questions that you have. And we will get to them at the end of the uh, webinar. The recording will also be provided as a link to you, um, all of you later on. In today's agenda, we're gonna start with a introduction, then move on to the current status in terms of the management of clinical trial site reads then show how Mint Lesion can transform this for your workflow. Look at how things are gonna improve by using Mint Lesion. And we're gonna start off the question answer session by going through top five FAQs that we generally notice um, when we are making presentations. And if there's still questions that are left unanswered, we will go to those later on. And finally, we will end this presentation by giving you an outlook in terms of where our uh, company is headed, where our software is headed, and some meetings where we will be presenting or exhibiting, and you could meet us on site uh, in person. So with that, I'm gonna hand over to my colleague, Tobias. Thank you very much, AJ, for the introduction. I also would like to warmly welcome you. I'm Tobias, and I would like to start over in presenting the big picture, the landscape for imaging and cancer research with all involved uh, stakeholders. This is a quite full slide, but let me guide you through. On the very right side, we do have the authorities, FDA and EMA, deciding about cancer drug approvals. Next to it, we have the pharma companies who set up clinical trials to get approvals for developed drugs. The imaging CROs, or CROs in general, operationally support the clinical trials as a service provider for pharma, and they generally do the so-called central read workflow. For example, with double blinded reads for images, of course, depending on the trial protocol. But of course, all cancer patients who participate in clinical, clinical trials are treated in hospitals. And there you can differentiate the job of a radiologist as follows. First, every cancer patient in clinical routine gets a clinical routine read, independent if they are participants of a clinical trial or non-participants of a clinical trial. But second, when a patient participates in a clinical trial, they normally get a dedicated clinical trial site read where specifics of a trial have to be considered, like specifics of criteria. And last but not least, third, radiologists also work on their own research projects for, for example, doing their publications. Therefore, they also have to do research reads. Mint Lesion now, our software platform, um, we are providing is currently used by different stakeholders and is um, designed for different jobs to be done, like in pharma for imaging biomarker research or criteria research, like for CROs to conduct the central read workflow, but also at sites where we support all three use cases. Important for you to understand that we do not develop dedicated uh, software solutions for each, each of the different stakeholders, it's just one software we are developing and we just configure it in different ways. The main focus of today's webinar is on clinical trial site reads. But if you have a major interest in the other areas, please let us know and we will follow up after this webinar. Before we now do the deep dive, I just want to show you the results of the question we raised when you registered for this webinar. We ask you how many clinical trial site reads does your department do per week? We had 123 valid answers and they were split as follows. 42% said five to 10 reads per week, 
16% said 10 to 15 reads per week, 10% said 15 to 20 reads per week, and almost one third of you are doing more than 20 clinical trial site reads per week. For us, it would be quite interesting to learn how you currently manage those reads, and we are very much looking forward to discussing this with you after this webinar. Let us now specifically focus on the clinical trial site read. And first, we would like to present you two different scenarios, how those site reads are organized. First, some institutions perform their site reads in a so-called primary read workflow, meaning they just do their routine read. And within this process, they also document all requirements for the clinical trial assessment within an Excel-based tumor log or even with paper and pen and dedicated forms. Another scenario is to do the site read in a dedicated secondary read workflow independently from primary routine read. Actually, the majority of our sites we are in contact with worldwide apply this secondary read workflow. I think there are pros and cons for both scenarios, but I believe the most important argument for a secondary read workflow is the expertise that is required by the radiologist who performs those site reads. On the following pages, we will now focus on the secondary read workflow, but we also have customers using the primary read workflow and they're very successful in doing it. So if, if you are very interested in how to perform clinical trial site reads in primary read workflow, also let us know and we will give you some more information on this. Let us now have a look into a specific site doing this clinical trial site read in a secondary read workflow. And let us first introduce the different stakeholders who are involved. We have, on the one hand, a sponsor rep representative who has to ensure that all clinical relevant information will be captured and documented in a clinical trial charter conform way. We do have the principal investigator in oncology who has the overall responsibility of a trial in a site. And generally, there are clinical trial coordinators to support the PI. They are also clinical trial coordinators in radiology, supporting the clinical trial work in this department, together with a technician who ensures that functionality of all systems that are required. But of course, last but not least, they are the senior radiologist who is doing the clinical trial, trial site read. Without a dedicated system, they normally work with three different instruments. First, they have the PAX viewer to view the images and to measure the lesion. Second, there are some forms for the documentation of the results, like Excel-based tumor logs or paper and pen-based forms to fill out. And last but not least, they, are also, they have also to consider the criteria uh, with all complex details that might come up. Before we now show you a workflow or how Mint Lesion helps you to manage this workflow, let us have a short look into the criteria world. What are criteria? Criteria are a kind of rule set to apply in therapy response assessment, leading to a dedicated time point response. For example, saying the cancer disease is stable, regressing or progressing. Why do we have different criteria? Different cancer types and different therapy approaches require specific rule sets to assess a cancer therapy. One example are the upcoming immunotherapies which have a total different mode of action compared with standard chemotherapies. Radiological response assessment has to be aligned with those different mode of actions, and this is why more and more criteria pop up. When we now consider the example of RESIST 1.1, there are some image-based input you have to capture, quantitatively um, as long or short axis, but also qualitatively like the documentation of non-targets or the appearance of new lesions. Together with a certain rule set that is defined in the RESIS publication, time point responses are derived to describe the radiological perspective of the cancer therapy response assessment. This criteria aspect is one of the most complex one when doing a clinical trial site read. Let's now have a look how MINT is supporting this workflow. And for this, I hand over to AJ. Thanks, Tobias. So as you were mentioning, you know, what we generally find with our current um, in, in the market right now is the use of three non-integrated instruments, the PAX viewer, a paper-based tumor log form, and uh, of course, you know, a publication or the trial charter uh, that has to be followed. 
But with Mint Lesion, we combine these three elements into one intelligent, cohesive platform, which first of all is an image viewer in itself. Secondly, it knows all the criteria. So Mint knows Resist 1.1, iResist, Lugano, Choi, all of these criteria are built into the system and it will guide the radiologist with the assessment that they have to make, prompting them with questions that they need to answer. For example, perhaps where they have to classify the lesions that are measured, simultaneously ensuring that the conformity of the criteria is being met. And finally, documenting all these results in a standardized and structured way and generating reports.